we got here is a new battery from Cyclone Bat, 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. And I cannot remember if this is a mini or a group 24. Let's get this open and check it out. All right, we got two sets of bolts here. And uh, boy, those two are really long. I'm not sure what you're gonna do with those. And a little pouch with the manual and stuff in there. Let's get started. And a uh, warranty card and a little manual. We'll look at that here in a little bit instead of the box. Nice thick foam. Your uh, do not eat this uh, silica gel, of course. And your battery. Some nice little handles there. Yeah, that's a mini. Your cycling bat. Life Pro 4 lithium iron phosphate, 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate deep cycle battery. And you got your QC pass sticker and a serial number here. And we got some information on the back here. That's nice. I like it when they print on the back the specifications of the battery because you lose these little manuals down the road five years from now or whatever. It's nice knowing that it's right there. Uh, caution, re risk of fire, explosion, or burns. Never throw away the battery into water. Keep it under dry. Never upside down. The positive and negative. Okay, never upside down the positive and negative. Never connect the positive and negative of battery with metal. Never ship or store the battery together with metal. Never knock, throw, or trample the battery. Never cut through the battery with nail or other edge tool. Okay. We'll make sure we never do any of that stuff. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. No, Will Robinson. Danger. I'm going to quickly pause this video for a moment and ask you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. So go ahead and click that subscribe button and the like button as well while you're at it. Then ring that notification bell to get, to get notifications. I'd really appreciate it. Now let's get back. Uh, discharge cutoff, 10.6 volts. Max charge voltage, 14.4. Plus or minus 2, so you go up to 14.6. It's the max. Max series voltage, uh, 48 volt, which would be 4 parallel and 4 series. Max continuous charge current, 120 amps. Wow. Max continuous discharge current, 120 amp. That's nice. Peak discharge current, 300 amps. Man. Okay, temperature range, negative 4 degrees to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. That should say, I'm sure, discharge range. Uh, well, we'll look at the manual and see where the uh, cold temperature protection is on the charge side. All right, we're going to start today's capacity test off a little differently here. We're going to go ahead and make me some breakfast. We're going to start off with uh, making a cup of coffee with this small electric tea kettle with a pour over. And then we're going to move on and make some uh, sausage and eggs scrambled. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this started. Get our inverter turned on here. All right, we can see this uh, tea kettle is using about 645 watts. We're going to go ahead and let that boil. And we'll get our uh, little collapsible pour over. Ready to go here. This is the first time I've used this. I normally use an arrow press, but I like this collapsible idea. So I thought I'd check it out. Get some coffee in there. All right, we'll go ahead and fast forward this and uh, while well, this gets up to boil. And one thing that's really nice about this shunt here, as you can see right here, it tells you the uh, 
wattage being used at the moment and the estimated time that you could continuously pull that same load to get an idea of how long your battery is going to last pulling 640 watts. This would last an hour and 56 minutes. All right, there we go. We just uh, finished our boil and used 5% of the battery. We'll go ahead and get our pour over started here. This is a much larger cup than you would normally use on a pour over, but that's okay. All right. We'll get that up out of the way here and we'll get us some breakfast started. What we're going to use here is this little Hittrick uh, hot pot to scramble us up some eggs and some sausage. And I like these low wattage cookers. This uses a maximum of about 620 watts, I think. But the low, there's two settings, low and high. Low is about 300 to 350, if I remember right. I, uh, I like this especially for uh, camping or... Um, using on a small power station or whatever, but we're gonna go ahead and use this today. Next time we'll use a full size. So you can see this here, I got it on the low setting and it's pulling 335 watts. It's already starting to heat up pretty good there. Get our sausage in here. And it's just a couple of link sausages that I cut up to make some uh, sausage crumble. I'm absolutely a breakfast person. I can eat breakfast uh, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And one of my favorite uh, seasonings that I use on all kinds of stuff is this Blackstone Breakfast Blend Seasoning. Get a little bit of that in there. So we're going to brown up our sausage first. We're just going to crack a couple eggs on top and scramble it throw a little cheese on it and be done with it. I said this is on the low setting. Now this does have a high, but I find really the high is almost too much. See what this is here. 650 watts, 653 watts. We'll do that for just a minute to brown this up good. It really starts to splatter though. That's like a high on a stove. I mean look at the steam coming off of that. And does have this little lid here. You can kind of keep the splatter down a little bit if you wanted. But like I said, I, I very rarely use the high setting. The low setting is enough for almost everything. Go ahead and turn that back down. Now I like to get this good and brown. So obviously the longer that you cook, the more power it's going to use. But I like to get a good uh, amount of browning on my sausage before I crack my eggs in there. What I like about this too. This is just a cheap uh, Farmer John Link sausage, and it puts off a lot of oil, but it's just just enough to, to for perfect amount for the eggs. So I make a different kind of breakfast all the time, and I'll be sharing that on the channel as we do these capacity tests. I mean, why not uh, actually use the energy in a real world situation that people need to do? Everybody needs to cook, and I think that's one of the main power consumption items that you need to consider as you're building out your system is if you're planning to go electric anyway and I do like gas but you know even if you plan on using gas I think it's a good idea to plan for electric uh, you never know when you're gonna be out of gas or you know the world's a crazy place right now 
it's a it's always a good idea to have options in the way that you uh, the way that you cook. All right, so that's looking pretty brown. Put that off to one side here. We'll crack our eggs in here. Those in there. I like to keep it pretty simple. And uh, just stir those around a little bit. A little bit more of this uh, seasoning in there. Just kind of keep it stirring. And it gives you nice fluffy eggs if you just kind of just keep pushing it aside, let it roll back down. If you just keep doing that, you end up with nice fluffy eggs. Everybody likes their eggs a little different sometimes. I usually have over easy or uh, I do when I scramble them, I put some, some cheese on there, which is what we're going to do here when these get done. I don't like to mix them together until it's kind of getting close to the eggs being done. And the more you can kind of move it around, the fluffier they sort of get without going, you know, crazy. Don't scramble the heck out of it. Meanwhile, the sausage is over here, get nice and brown on this one side here. And it's about to the stage where I start mixing it together, to get it all done. Go ahead and do that now. And now what I like to do is I like to put a little Tabasco sauce on there. cheese and a little bit of salt and pepper I have that over in the kitchen I have to go get that we'll just do that on the plate all right so one thing you can do here is you can just turn this off and you'll get a nice melt on your cheese so now you can see we've done coffee and uh, eggs and sausage and we've used 8% of the battery and uh, we'll go ahead and finish off this capacity test by hooking this up to my mango power E and that has uh, Let's see, should be about a 450 watt draw. And it's building up now, there we go, 500. All right, we're gonna go ahead and let that finish off for this capacity test, and then uh, we'll check and see the total amp hours of this battery and have us breakfast at the same time. All right, I got this all washed, we'll get this plated up here, have us some breakfast. Got our eggs here, a little bit of salt and pepper, a little bit more Tabasco sauce because I like my Tabasco sauce, and we got our coffee here, ready to go. All right, back to our test. Left the city behind Headed to Concho Gonna find my peace of mind Found a little piece of heaven Where the desert meets the sky In my tiny home Where the stars come alive Ooh, yeah No more hustle and bustle No more sin
in my tiny home where freedom can be beat. All right, one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of this test was I set the uh, amp meter to 103 amp hours because I wanted to see if we can go over this 100 amp hours here, and we did. We, we hit that 103 barely. My inverter was yelling at me uh, that it was about to lose power about uh, at 102 amp hours, honestly, and, but I was able to squeeze the 103 out of there, uh, which dropped down to 10 point something volts though. Uh, so I'm really impressed with that. And going back to the cooking portion, what, uh, if you break that down, I was able to cook, uh, uh, make a cup of coffee and cook some scrambled eggs and sausage with a total of 103 watt hours. All right, so what those numbers mean is we used 103 approximately watt hours, which means if you were to pull in 103 watts from a solar panel, it would take one hour with that sort of input to recharge that battery completely from that breakfast that we just made. So that's not bad at all, especially in the morning. That's when you're getting the most sun. So that the battery would have been replenished from that sun, you know, really quickly, even with just a small 100 watt panel. Now this is 12.8 volts at 100 amp hours. That is equivalent to 1280 watt hours. So 8% of the battery so I could have made that same breakfast, uh, what, a little over uh, 10 times, 11 times or something. That's not bad for a little tiny 100 amp hour battery. Uh, so I'm pretty impressed with this. And uh, like I said, what I'm gonna do on my channel is more practical use type of applications like this to allow people to figure out what kind of wattage it takes to do certain tasks and things like that. I'm not gonna really get into the uh, highly technical battery teardown type of stuff. But what I'm going to do is whenever I do a battery that I have seen a video already torn apart, I'll go ahead and link it down below. In this case, uh, there's a guy named Brad Cagle, which I watch all the time, and he's torn this battery apart to verify that the cold temperature protection actually does work. So I'll link that down below and you can check that out if you're interested in that sort of thing. Uh, he did have a hard time getting inside this battery, so he had to put it in the freezer and that sort of thing because there was lots of glue and stuff inside here. So I'm not going to bother with any of that. Uh, what I care about is that it performs the way that it does, and I appreciate these guys that do do these teardowns. And whenever I see them, uh, somebody has done that on a battery that I'm reviewing, I'll go ahead and link it in my description. So that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.